Thank Here you we very are, much, yeah. John. Welcome back, everybody, to Anderson's TV. Digital John. Uh, we're taking a little trip down the new X Cerberus Avenue today. But mm -hmm. before we do, what have we got to tell him, John? Like and subscribe. <coughs> <coughs> My job here is done. Like much. and subscribe. <laughs> uh, I don't think we'll have many timestamps today because there's not a lot to tell you about in this, but maybe there are. You might want to fast forward. And yeah. if you'd like to look like John or me in our fine and dandy Anderton's merch, then yes, dive on over to the website and knock yourself out. Okay, this uh, is a product from the lovely people at Newex. I don't actually think it's that new. Uh, it's no. just Newex for Andertons. Yeah, as I was doing a bit of research ahead of this, I was like, wow, these videos have been on YouTube for some time. So it's been about, yeah. So, uh, but it's a fairly classic format of product. Yeah. Um, we are running the guitar into the front. Uh, you could just run straight out the back into the front of your amplifier, or you, if you have a, an effects loop, you can take advantage of the fact that it's relatively easy to plug this in, in a way that the drive effects go through the front of the amplifier and the delay and modulation effects go through the effects loop, which is what we have done. Um, the pedal, I suppose it's probably feels like a sort of a simpler version of something like a Boss ME90 maybe. Yep. It's a fair comparison. Um, has two modes. It's manual mode, which is where we are now. We are simply turning on and off delays, modulations. It has the most industrial switches yeah. ever. They are genuinely this clunky. Um, distortion here, drive here, and reverb over here. A couple of things that are perhaps unusual on here. You've got options for how you might want to route your distortion and overdrive. So we're running the drive into the distortion. Mm -hmm. You can have them in parallel, uh, no, that's off. You can have them in parallel up here, or you can switch it the other way around so that your drive goes into the distortion. Your control button over here can do any one of these four things. So it can um, turn your modulation on and off, your uh, drive on and off, your boost on and off. My gut feeling is this is most useful when you're in your um, preset mode. Yeah. Because then you'd be loading presets up and then you'd just be having yeah. one button doing one thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if I hold this button down here, we go into a more traditional style of uh, preset mode. So yeah. as I'm clicking through, we are uh, bringing up a combination of effects. So yeah. let's go through them. Should we go, let's just start with the reverb. Okay. Reverb over here, three different types. Uh, spring, plate, and hall. We're on plate. Let's have a listen. Go mad. Spring. Uh, hall. But yeah, it's just these two controls here, level and decay. I always like plate. Again, interesting feature here. This middle switch um, allows you to decide whether you want reverb into delay, delay into reverb, or the two effects uh, in parallel. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're leaving the reverb on all the time by using the control switch over here. If I don't use this control, what happens is this switch will switch delay and reverb uh, on simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the delay. So we've got uh, 70s, 60s, and 80s delay here. Why wouldn't you just go 60s, 70s, and 80s? My, <laughs> my OCD has upset me, but here we go. <laughs> I don't even really know what happens. I guess we go from tape delays in the 60s through to digital delays in the 80s. Yeah, I think it's like Bucket Brigade, tape, and digital, I think. Let's have a little listen. Right. <laughs> You adjust the length of delay here, how many repeats, uh, and the level of the delay up here. Uh, let's try a 70s delay. An 80s delay. Sounds like there's more delay time when you're in 80s mode as well, but mm. um, it doesn't really matter which one we use for this particular demo. Um, I mean, the 80s were awesome. It's so all about more in there. the 80s, yeah. <clears throat> um, then we've got modulation over here. This confused us slightly. You've got um, core, various chorus options on mm. this side, 
and then you've got um, some other modulation, tremolo, phaser, and univibe on this side. They will work together. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've done, if you only want one to work as such, you effectively just run the depth control of the one that you don't want at zero. So yeah. here are the choruses. <laughs> some way of running this in stereo from memory. I think if you, oh, it's got a stereo got two effects up. loop, which yeah. would be kind of cool. Uh, we might as well listen to some of the other um, controls on the other side. This is our tremolo. Phaser. Univibe. I like that. Um, yeah, nice effects. If I'm bear in mind here, even you know that you might be going, oh, how how do I switch between them and all that kind of stuff? Uh, once you've got your uh, pedals that you like, you know your your preset that you like, you can save that. So obviously you can have all your different presets switch to different modes and everything, and they'll remember that. Uh, let's jump over to drive next. Drive is the sort of the lower gain of the two distortions in here. Let's turn mod off. Oh well, then, yes. <laughs> Uh, and then um, distortion is the higher of the gain of the two. And we'll put the two together. So got tons of gain in here. Loads, yeah. Um, I kind of feel now, let's just get everything on and feel like we're going to store this as a, as a sound. So here we go, let's just... Save button, choose which memory location you'd like to save it into, and then hit the save again. Uh, and that's it. So basically, if I was in, I think it was 1D, One Direction yeah. for your gig that you're doing with them, <laughs> when they reform. Yeah, so 1D will be what we just cool. stored. So. And so, curiosity, what are these other presets saying? So That is curious. Um, okay, so let's go into, right, so this is our first preset. I don't know. Sounds great. So I've got to tell you about a little boost control at the back here. If I pop us back into manual mode and change my control function to be uh, boost, you'll see now um, I can have like a gainy sound like I've got now. <laughs> Totally apologise if we clipped the uh, <laughs> microphones there, but you get the idea. So as well as your, you know, four different um, effects you can turn off here, you can turn the boost on and off yeah. the back. Um, it had a pretty dreadful sounding cabinet emulation option on here. Um, we were going to do this. Well, we, we toyed with doing mm. this video as a straight in DI. Yeah. 
Yeah. It wasn't good. This is the thing what it was made for, this kind of setup, yeah. right? And the kill dry, I haven't quite worked out under what circumstance you would use that, but if you don't want to hear any of the dry signal, you just want to hear the affected stuff, you can do that. But it sounds a bit, I mean, this one sounds a bit weird, look. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I suppose if you're putting this through uh, some sort of parallel effects loop of another product and you're able to blend the wet yeah. dry mix separately, it might be useful. But it's an unusual feature to have on something like this. Maybe for record, I mean, if you can separate them out in recording, have one as a wet and dry, I don't know, but. Yeah, uh, it's got a headphone output. I think we said stereo effects loop, if that's good for you. You can attach an expression pedal if you want to be able to do your sort of volume control and stuff like that. It's not too big of a footprint as well. It's quite, you know, modest. Yeah, I mean, size. that's... I, uh, we'll have to see where the price goes on this. At the moment, it's about 50 quid less than an ME90. And I kind of feel like you'd probably be better off spending the extra 50 quid on the ME90. Uh, maybe the size of it is what drives you down here because it's it's like a quarter of the size of the ME90. Mm. I sort of feel if it was closer to the sort of 199 mark, might just give it its own thing. Mm -hmm. Who knows, maybe it will be at some point in the future. You have to check the latest price on the yeah. Anderton's website. But it sounds decent. Yeah, I mean, build could... quality is also like ridiculous. Like you need to try just pressing those yeah, switches. Yeah, it's a workout in itself, isn't yeah. it? You could just like, you know, change patches 25 times and Literally, really do yeah. the quads hench, up. Hench yeah. hands. <laughs> And it's built, um, built very well. All right, well, look, that's it. I think, John, would you just do some extended playing? I'll um, try. And uh, what is this as well? This, this is, looks rather old and relict for someone so young is, as yourself. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, Pete recommended it to me. It's a, how would you pronounce it? Hanson? Hanson. I would say Hanson. Hanson, yeah, yes. I was going to say Hanson. <laughs> um, again, not my particular kind of thing I'd go to, but... It's I'm, a Hanson T-Type, and uh, we use time. it in the studio because it never goes out of tune. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, right, look at you shredding away. Come on then, let's have a play out and... Uh take it back I, ha I half kind of feel like it's all right it Pretty sounds good. might not have the features and the functionality of the me90 but the basic sound is good isn't it yeah hey there we are it's just as well we did that last bit right see you next time bye bye